for the message tonight. And uh, I see you got Kristen already got the cheat sheets in there, so you got an idea of what it is. It's called Resolution 2011. Get to know God. I think a lot of times we run into a problem when we get to know God and we think we know Him, but we haven't learned to know Him on a personal basis. Yeah. You know, we know who He is, we know what He's all about, but we haven't got all the little nitty-gritty details. We get out, we make resolutions that we really have no intention whatsoever of keeping, but it sounds good. It's kind of like wishful thinking. We do it on a short-term commitment. Here's five top New Year resolutions. Number five, take up new hobbies. Number four, make more money. Number three was to improve relationships. Now I found these on the internet. I didn't make these up. And number two was to stop smoking. Some of them straw holes or whatever they do that they figure out. But here was the number one absolute most popular New Year resolution. Lose weight. Ninety-nine out of a hundred people when I asked what their resolutions were, had that on list. Well, now, these I came up with. Because I figured I could keep them. The number three on the list was to eat more. Number two on the list was to exercise less. And I thought, what would be a good appropriate number? I'll, I'll spend an extra half hour watching television. <laughs> I figured I could keep all those. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> from the book of James, first chapter, verse 8, here's a description the way most of us treat our resolutions. It says a double minded man is unstable in all these ways. <clears throat> Probably that verse wasn't covering a resolution, but it certainly fits the way we work it. How many's ever heard of charismatic? Well, he was a charismatic pastor, and his name was Craig Smith. And he wrote a message about resolutions, and he titled it New Year's According to Proverbs. Now, Pastor Schmidt, he used King Solomon, and I don't think anybody would, you know, dispute the word that he was one of the wisest men that ever lived. No, not just Pastor Schmidt, King. And uh, I was rather surprised that uh, this pastor found ten principles to live on, and he took them from Proverbs chapter 3. So, I wrote down these ten principles and then I kind of went on my own and added to them a little bit to sort of define what they were talking about. Now, this whole message or the whole New Year's resolutions comes from Proverbs chapter 3 all the way through the whole 32 verses. I'm not going to take time because we're running a little bit behind. We've got a late start. But I'm just going to briefly go over these because I don't want to short these other guys any time. Number one, let the loyalty and faithfulness never leave you. That comes from verses 3 to 4. Loyalty and faithfulness are two qualities that are God in the world. They must be the foundation of all that we do. Both involve actions as well as attitudes. How many times have I seen somebody get out there and do something? You know, they do the action and you watch them. Oh, they're absolutely miserable. So you don't have a good attitude, what's the point of doing it? 
And that's what her life does. It shows people what kind of a loyal or faithful attitude we got. When they see us, you heard the joke about the, the police officer that pulled up behind this car at the stoplight and kept blowing their horn like crazy to learn from them because the light hadn't changed. Just screaming and yelling. And the cop pulled this car over and arrested the lady that was driving it. And she said, what are you arresting me for? And she saw suspicion of this being a stolen vehicle. And um, she said, but it's mine. Check the registration. And sure enough, it was her car. And he said, but ma'am, I saw this Jesus sticker and the fish on the back of your car. I thought it was stolen with the attitude you had. That's the kind of attitude we get a lot of times. I mean, number two says, trust the Lord with all your heart. That's my favorite verse. It comes from the fifth verse from six. Sometimes we've got important decisions to make. And we often feel that we can trust no one. And sometimes we think we can't trust God. How many times has our attitude put us in a situation where we felt like we couldn't trust God? We just didn't give it to him. We came up with this attitude that, well, um, if I hang on to this myself, then I can take all the credit. You know, it's like when we're riding around Walmart. God, give me a heart and place. And about that time, somebody starts back, and I can say, never mind if I want to own. <laughs> So what do we do with it? Yeah, we don't trust God. We try to trust ourselves. And number three, just don't be wise in your own heart. Verse 7 and 8. Did you pray about the New Year's resolution that you got? Did you ask God for guidance before you set this unreachable goal? Get out of here and we, we try to Pretend we ask God stuff. And then we get all this grief stuck at us. Everything goes wrong. And we say, God, how come it happened? You can just imagine God looking at them and say, You didn't ask. You didn't trust me. You didn't let me show you how to do it. And it just causes us a whole lot more grief. Now here's a good one. Number four, honor the Lord with your wealth. Gee whiz, I don't have much. When I get done, I'll give you what I got left. You know, what God wants is first fruit. He wants the best for the harvest. And yet we're always giving him leftovers. He gives us the best of what he has, puts us first. But yet, when we have an opportunity to give back, he gets the leftovers after we have picked the best food for ourselves. You realize that when we give to God, it helps us conquer grief. It opens the doors for his blessings. Sometimes we just manage to sit out here and don't look at the blessings that we actually got. They're raining down on us all the time. We don't have time to recognize them. After all, the first fruits is anyway. He just let us use it for a while. This is probably one of the most harsh ones that we have to deal with. Number five says, Do not despise the Lord's discipline. 